single day. Very glad to here to introduce my engineer practice of OpenStack in China. In our cloud service, private cloud and public cloud, I'm Zheng Jun, CTO of China C Group. So let's begin. Uh, first, we will introduce the glass of China C. Our company is created in 2010, and it is the same year we offer the public cloud in China. Today, this moment, we have the 21 data centers. So host the 15,000 physical servers in our data centers. So uh, optic fiber interconnect for the main data centers include Beijing, Shanghai, Guangzhou, Shenzhen, and Hong Kong. So in the 2015, we have achieved a seed round of $100 million. So this is my company's chance for private cloud and public cloud. This moment, we offer the four types of cloud for end users in China, public cloud and private cloud, and hybrid cloud, IDC cloud. So the public cloud is more complicated. I think uh, the small part of OpenStack is utilized in our public uh, large-scale data center and large-scale cloud service. The private cloud, our product is fully based on the OpenStack. So based on public cloud and uh, private cloud, we offer the hybrid cloud. You know, in China, the more complicated scenarios utilized achieved for the cloud-based model. So hybrid cloud is nature, I think. OK, we just uh, released the data-driven hybrid cloud policy for the end user in China. IDC to cloud is more about the how to transfer the traditional IDC provider into the cloud service provider. You know, there is uh, two things here. The first is how to transfer the traditional IDC to be cloud data center. The first is how we offer the operation capability to these traditional rack providers. So I think IDC to cloud is a very interesting product for my end user. This picture gives you the overview of my product portfolio for the China C in China market. The first is elastic computing. The last computing is wholly based on the NOVA. It's mainly to offer with our auto scaling capability to offer the high performance computing for the end user. The second, I think, is SDN. You know, SDN, I think, is a more methodology for providing the more complicated product. For example, we offer the VPN as a service, load balance as a service, the ferro as a service, and everything focused on SDN. So the Computing and networking, of course, is the first important thing for the public and private. The second, I think, is we offer the CDN, the content delivery networks. This moment, we have created 200 CDN nodes in China. The second, second is, of course, is CDN. The following, the more complicated service we offer in our cloud infrastructure. The COS. The COS is, uh, full name is China C Objective Storage. It is mainly based on our own developed uh, product. The Swift hasn't been used in our solutions. You know, we develop ourselves our distributed file system, a distributed database, and then we will offer the objective, large-scale objective story for the huge amount, for the massive data management. Based on the COS, based on the objective story, we offer the Spark as a service, big data as a service for the public cloud and the private cloud. I think the Spark as a service is more complicated. How to offer, how to provide the automatic cluster of Spark management, management in the cloud, in the large scale network is a challenge. The resource management is very, very challenging, I think, here. But we offer this mostly the service delivery and the service automation. So, you know, in China, the situation of the cloud environment is very different from the American. Private cloud, I think, is more popular, you know, but uh, Chinese company, especially national company, has a lot of money to set up their own data center with a large scale data center. So the environmental service is very important. How to offer the high performance computing, HTC component based on the hybrid cloud environment, including the environmental service, is very important. We just based on OpenStack Ironic, we offer, they develop our own good excellent service, named as the CBMS, 
the Chinese environmental service for the high performance computing and user. So these slides give you the simple picture about my private cloud, the just is a dashboard. The cloud ultra is fully based on OpenStack, but I think we do a lot of innovation features beyond OpenStack. So what is important, I think, is to offer the advanced feature to the enterprise level user for the private cloud, especially how to automatic deployment, how to achieve the automatic management, and uh, how to the easy use and feasibility for the private cloud. So the following, I will give you some thought about OpenStack engineering, especially in the China market. So from the 2015, from the last year, you know that Chinese customer accept OpenStack more easily. I think it's good news for the, all the OpenStack community. But I think the challenge exists in the direction of the feasibility, the automation of the stack, and the monitoring of the spec. Also, everything, I think, a lot of challenge here. So I think that this year, these two years is a significant time window for OpenStack Life Circle. You know, in the last, in the last five years, we, we achieved a lot of results, a lot of outcome for OpenStack, from OpenStack Corporation. But how to transfer the result into the real production environment is a challenge, I think. So the last two things I thought is how to develop the metro and the disruptive product beyond OpenStack. You know there is a word that is no there is a free software doesn't mean free launch. Right? So I think that we must develop the once the feature beyond the open stack, beyond the Nova. So for the China C we develop hypothesis computing. We develop also automatic features for the easy deployment and easy use. So the first 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 important three thing I think here is uh, HPC automation and the full stack are concerned for the cloud future, for the open stack future. The HPC I think is a strong desire requirement in China. You know that large scale, a lot of private cloud end users, especially likely to set up their own data center with a lot of with a lot of physical servers. How to provide data intensive, IO intensive service is a challenge, I think. You know that we should not only focus on the GPU, but also we focus on uh, x86. So how to offer the general HPC solutions based on the OpenStack is ch challenging, I think. Automation is only, a, I think automation is the soul of the cloud, especially for the large scale cloud. So the full stack, it means that uh, I think that the ice, the boundary between ice and path will disappear smoothly, you know? so. I think a full stack, just like the AWS OpsWorks, is the future of the cloud. The end user only cares about uh, APP performance. So as a cloud service provider, we should pay more attention to the whole generation solution. Networking, res networking results, storage results, computing results, and the message, and the database, and other software, all the components can be orchestrated in our cloud service. So, Full stack, end-to-end -end performance guarantee is most important for the end user for the cloud future. The following, we will give you more detailed our innovation about uh, the security, performance, and elasticity. So I will invite my technical guys, my technical director, to introduce my detailed innovation. Hi, everybody. Um, thank you for coming here. And uh, my name is Liu Xiaoxin. And uh, in the next 10 minutes, I will uh, give some more details about our uh, cloud engineering practice in China C. Mm. And as you can see, um, the, while talking with our cloud customers, and we found that um, customers are, uh, care very much on some of the capabilities um, while adopting the cloud services. Here is the elasticity, performance, and uh, security. And why we say uh, elasticity is trying to, um, it means the abilities to expand and contrast in response to business needs. And uh, while performance 
is mostly focusing on how to optimize the speed and the throughput of our cloud services. And uh, in terms of security, that means um, it cares most about how to protect the data and ensure it's consumable in the cloud services. Uh, in terms of uh, electricity, and uh, we did a lot of works around li this area. And uh, the first one is we support a broad matrix in our cloud services, not uh, in both virtualizations and storage and network models. And uh, it can meet different customers' application requirements. Um, sometimes they need not only virtualization, but also some of the applications is needs to deploy in environmental or containers. And uh, for storage, we have support different um, kind of combinations in our portfolio. For networks, we had uh, support both the open with switch and also integrated with some third parties hardware SDN solutions. And while different applications or workloads may have different requirements for the QoS, so from this perspective, we developed a bunch of um, capabilities to guarantee the storage LPSs or the network bandwidth for the workloads. And while stepping further, uh, we would like to provide more automatic scaling um, based on uh, defined policies. As you can see here, uh, for the auto scaling, we support both the horizontal scale out and in and uh, also the vertical scale up and down. For the hor horizontal scaling, it's mostly based on the China Seas stack watch and the China Seas load balancer product together com with the OpenStack heat engines. And while uh, some of the, the workloads are bursting or coming down, the cell watch will trigger the um, add or remove new instance to the back end of the load balancer. And for the vert vertical um, parts, um, it mainly focuses on um, add adding or remove resources of instance, such as the CPU, memory, network bandwidth, and the disk. And uh, here, uh, Tennessee did some uh, enhancements the, um, for this part. It can now do a live upgrade of CPU and memories. That means that you can reduce the downtime um, while we do the scaling. Here, in terms of um, data security, uh, we also provide a bunch of feature groups to help enhance the security to avoid data loss and uh, do some fast recovery from disaster or some human operation errors. And uh, well, for, from the bottom line, we leverage the um, capabilities of the low-end storage systems, such as the read technology or multi-copy uh, mechanisms in our back-end back distributed storage system. For example, Ceph or uh, GrassDev, something like that. And uh, further, we, uh, based on the Cinder snapshots or backup restore capabilities, we built the capabilities of um, keep on the data status from a specific point in time. And uh, also, uh, we extend some of the remote um, backup and restore capabilities to store the snapshots to a remote site, um, which can be uh, options for the disaster recovery. But all the previous two um, op uh, options are mainly focusing on uh, um, keeping the status of a point in time, a specified point in time, but it cannot um, protect some of the human um, operation errors. So we bring in a new feature of Cinder CDP, which named continuous data protections, and uh, it can help re recover the data to um, any point in time of uh, no block storage. And here is a, a detailed view of the Warren continuous data protection um, uh, operations. Uh, from the left side, you can see uh, that's the general um, IO write flow. It goes through the block layer and then direct 
uh, uh, go to the block drivers and write to the storage system. Um, but with the, the continuous data productions, we uh, uh, embedded a module CDP um, in this, this flow. And well, the, the uh, IO writes go through the, the virtualization systems. It will be captured by the CDP module, and uh, yeah, and uh, be stored in the CDP repositories. And here is the um, work detailed workflows of these mechanisms. And uh, it will first um, do some uh, replicates of the initial images to the CDP servers, and uh, will capture each I/O write and. Uh, CDP modules will um, replicate the um, I/O write data to the CDP size. Uh, so, based uh, with the stored metadata and then the uh, I/O payloads, it can restore um, images once the, re uh, the source image site has some crashes or disasters. And here, um, it's from the perspective of performance, uh, we did a lot of works in. Um, storage, compute, or network. And uh, from the storage side, we now in our cloud services, we can been support multiple uh, different backends, uh, including the distributed storage systems, and also some of traditional SAN storage. And we do some of the special core bindings to, for the safe OSD processes to ensure the, capability, the performance capabilities. And for the safe, um, SSD scenarios, we have some optimizations to the memory allocations, which can improve the read and write um, several times. And from a compute perspective, we um, have some CPU bindings to the physical cores, and also enables the scheduling um, by leveraging the new multi-technologies. And uh, some huge page um, uh, settings and the pass-through uh, PCI devices to enhance the performance. And from the net network perspective, we had made some uh, open with switch DBDK enablements, and also leverage the SRLV um, supposed to direct the network work um, flows to uh, watch functions on the network, do some um, tunnel offloadings, which will uh, release the CPU processing um, Workload. And here is the uh, general uh, uh, package flows for uh, the optimization of this DBDK. From the left side is the traditional, it will go through the TCP IP kernel stacks. Well, in the right side is the uh, package flow with, uh, with the DBDK, it will go directly send the, 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 the pass to the uh, user land, which reduced a lot of Linux kernel overheads. And then coming to uh, slides, it shows some measure, measurement results of these uh, optimizations. Here is the two VMs in the uh, same host. And uh, as you can see, um, the, the performance of the, uh, the throughputs and the latencies in the switch with DPDK is extremely higher than the uh, traditional way. And especially in the latency sites, it, it, uh, uh, it's just, um, with the DPDK scenario, it's just half of the traditional um, environments. And here is the, um, the test scenarios about um, two VMs in uh, two different hosts, which goes through, the, uh, which the network traffic goes through the, the external switch. We can also see uh, some obvious improvements in the throughputs and the, the latency. Um, here, the time is very short, so it's next all for um, our sharings. And uh, uh, here's the contact information for us, and we had a booth by B12. Um, so if you have any interesting topics, you can um, visit our booth and uh, have uh, further discussions. All right. Thank you. Okay, thank you.